we're back with the latest update of Azeng News, and here they are. Head of Vocational and Technical School meeting in China to develop educational system in Timor-Leste. Timor is Secretary of State for Secondary Education and Technical School, Domingos Lemos Lopez, stated it when he participated at regional meeting of heads of vocational and technical schools in China. Lopez underlined the important step of the meeting in order to discuss the way of developing the vocational and technical education as well as better education system in Timor Leste. They shared their experiences in establishing the system mainly on vocational and technical education. Timor Leste will collaborate in this matter with developed countries in order to build a good standard vocational and technical education in Timor Leste. The representative of the Commission, Xin Jiangxi, said, considered it is an important meeting for it can find a solution to the vocational and technical education at the regional level problems. I think uh, we can learn from uh, each other about uh, based on the uh, context uh, how to develop TVET and how to uh, support our social economic de development in our own countries. Lopez and his delegation will be in China for a week for a high-level seminar and conference where it also participated by the ASEAN representatives. While in China, the delegation will visit factories and vocational and technical schools for machines, maritime, and other areas. Countries participated in the seminar and the conference are Brunei, Singapore, Philippines, Malaysia, Cambodia, Indonesia, and Timor Leste. Beijing Normal University willing to establish cooperation with Timorese government. After attending the Global Smart Education Conference in Beijing, China, Domingos Lopez, Timorese Secretary of State for Secondary Education and Technical School, met with President of Beijing Normal University to discuss cooperation between the Normal University and the Timorese government, where they will facilitate Timorese to study at the Normal University. We were invited by the President of Beijing Normal University to have a discussion mainly about cooperation offers the opportunity for our students on how they can enroll with the university. We will establish a great relationship with this university, especially to provide skill development for Timorese teachers. They also discussed about providing teachers training opportunity as it can help to improve Timor Leste's education sector. Lopez and Tim and some of the ASEAN representatives for the regional meeting visited factories, vocational and technical schools to directly observe China's vocational education progress. There should be human resources development for the vocational and technical education in Timor-Leste to work better. Beijing International Global Smart Education Conference, attended by the Timorese Secretary of State for Secondary Education and Technical School, and he stated that vocational technical school in Timor-Leste running properly. The main priority is the teacher's skills development by working together with the Ministry of Education and the national and regional levels partners. The main idea is how to train the teachers. As the senior countries had explained and shared their education system, which is more advanced, respectively, our Ministry of Education can see the progress and its procedures. Since it requires the participation of all parts of the Ministry of Education, we must take advantage from this and apply it in Timor Leste. Lopez added that this is an important conference as it become one step to Timor Leste since some of the developed countries had also shared their experiences on vocational and technical education system and Timor Leste can invest more in it. Orta and Neo charged the fairs of the United States discussing the future cooperation of both countries. The new United States Charged Affairs to Timor-Leste, Mark Winstock, met with Timorese President Jose Ramos Horta mid of August 2023 to introduce himself and to discuss cooperation between Timor-Leste and the United States in various areas. And to talk about our wonderful partnership and relationship um, between the United States and Timor-Leste. 
and the Millennium Challenge Corporation, we will continue to focus on uh, development programs in uh, Timor Leste and working with the government of Timor Leste and with the people of Timor Leste. Pablo Zorta asked the new charge of affairs to do his best and continue to strengthen cooperation in all identified areas. Uh, the president and I had a, a, a good discussion. Uh, he welcomed me to Timor Leste and the warmth that he provided to me uh, was wonderful. Um, I've enjoyed our conversation. I enjoy um, the opportunity to work in Timor Leste and to exchange and have a great relationship uh, between our two governments. And the president and I believe thoroughly in our partnership and cooperation. United States will continue its cooperation with Timor Leste through areas such as security, development, and defense. Timor Leste will participate in the 43rd ASEAN Summit in Jakarta, Indonesia. Timor's Foreign Affairs Vice Minister for ASEAN, Milena Rangel, informed Timor Leste will participate in the 43rd ASEAN Summit in Jakarta, Indonesia, on 5 to September 2023. In the summit, Timor Leste will present the work progress that have done so far, especially the manuscript tasks. We have received the script in May. After four months of implementing the script, we have carried out many works, and it's time for us to inform the small amounts of progress. As observer, we will deliver our general speech at the summit. There are 10 state members of ASEAN, which are Brunei, Cambodia, Indonesia, Laos, Malaysia, Myanmar, the Philippines, Singapore, Thailand, and Vietnam. The ASEAN was established on August 1967 in Bangkok, Thailand, by five nations, which were Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, Thailand, and the Philippines. Cambodia's newly elected parliament endorses Hun Manet as prime minister. <laughs> Cambodia's newly elected parliament endorsed Sun Manet as the country's new prime minister with a unanimous vote. The vote comes amid a historic transfer of power as Hun Manet takes over from his father, the incumbent Hun Sen, who has led the country for 38 years. Hun Manet gave a short speech following the vote and thanked the parliamentarians for their trust. And in a press conference after the voting session, Hun Sen told media that he was proud of Hun Manet and that he hoped his son will be able to keep up with his achievements. Hun Manet will lead his new government's cabinet members in a swearing in ceremony which is held in the first cabinet meeting on Thursday, August 24, 2023. Singapore charges 10 foreigners who allege involvement in money laundry case. Singapore authorities charged 10 foreign nationals in court for alleged money laundering and forgery offenses in a case involving about $1 billion or 737 million US dollar of cash, properties, luxury cars, and other assets. Singapore police said the foreigners were aged between 31 and 44 and their nationalities include Chinese, Turkish, Cypriot, Cambodian, and Nivanuatu. Police seized the assets during simultaneous raids across the island state and prohibition of disposal orders were issued against 94 properties and 50 vehicles with a total estimated value of more than $815 million or 599 million US dollars. In a separate statement, the Singapore Central Bank said it has been in touch with the financial institutions, FIs, where the potential tainted funds have been identified. Supervisory engagement with these FIs are ongoing without naming the FIs. Thailand former Prime Minister hospitalized after return from self-exile. Officials say Thailand's former Prime Minister Thaksin Shinawatra was moved to hospital overnight over concerns about his heart and high blood pressure on his first night in jail following his historic return from self-exile. The Corrections Department said in a statement that 74-year-old Thakshin had felt chest tightness and high blood pressure and was referred to Bangkok's police hospital at around 2 a.m. on August 22nd. Thakshin made his homecoming on Tuesday, August 22nd, and was escorted to jail in a dramatic scenes that stole the spotlight from political ally Shreta Tavishin, who was elected prime minister in a parliamentary vote later in the day. Police said Thakshin was hospitalized because the prison was unable to guarantee he will get the right care. Takshin was accompanied by eight prison guards when he was transferred during the night 
Ayut Sintopant, Director General of the Corrections Department, told Reuters. Ten people dead after plane crashes in West Malaysia. According to the local authorities, a plane crashed in Malaysia's Selangor state, killing 10 people, including eight passengers and crew, as well as a motorcyclist and driver. State Police Chief Hussein Omar Khan said the small private Beechcraft plane was two minutes away from landing when it lost contact with the tower and crashed, hitting a motorcycle and a car on the highway. There were no survivors from the accident. Chief Executive of the Civil Aviation Authority of Malaysia, Murazman Mahmoud, in a statement said it crashed near Elmina Township after departing from the holiday island of Langkawi and rode to the Selangor Sultan Abdul Aziz Shah Airport. Thailand Prime Minister elect pledges to become a leader for the people. Thailand's Prime Minister elected Shreta Tavisin vowed to become a leader for the people after successfully securing the Prime Ministerial position from the Parliament. People's Prime Minister. The victory by the 60-year-old Shreta paves the way for a new coalition government, ending weeks of uncertainty and stalemate in parliament. After an election 100 days ago that threatened to weaken the political clout of the country's powerful military, Shreta, who was thrust into the spotlight just a few months ago by the populist heavyweight Pu Thai, won the support from the two-thirds parliament in a vote that followed hours of hysteria in Thailand over the long-awaited return of Thaksin from self-imposed exile. Shreto made only brief remarks to reporters, said he would hold a press conference after he receives the endorsement of Thailand's king. And that's the end for today, everyone. We will see you all again soon. Have a nice day and bye.